What's happening? Welcome to the 54th episode of the Slap Stream, live from Slapsville. Uh, I always say that this, but it's 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 still crazy that I'm that I'm, I've been doing this for <laughs> for over a year. All these slap bass players that I would like to feature and that I think that the uh, world deserves to know about them. Sorry, I've been skipping a few episodes here and there. I've been starting to get like fairly busy, so. It's starting to get harder and harder to do these, but uh, I'm, I'm doing my best to keep it going. If you like these, make sure like to check out the Patreon. The description is uh, the sorry, the link is in the description under the video. And um, if you'd like to support the slap stream, check out Venmo and PayPal links um, under the video as well in the description. And you can do that. Uh, even when we're not live and when we are live, you can do, um, how do they call it? Stickers and super stickers and super chats that YouTube gave me an option to have. Uh, without further ado, I would like to introduce my, my guest for today. You all probably know about the Peacocks and I love that band. I have seen them like a couple of times, I believe always in the States. Uh, not always in states. I lie. I just lied. Like I saw them once when they uh, opened for Tiger Army when we played somewhere in Switzerland. And it's always a fantastic show, and I love that band. So I hope to see them tour again soon. And I have their bass player here with me, not here in the Los Angeles, but he's here in the Slapsville. And I would like to introduce Simon. I mean, Simon Langhart. What's happening? Nice to meet you. Nice to see you. How are you? I'm fine. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks for joining me here in the slap cell. Yeah, finally it happened. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We made it happen. Yeah. We, we already have a, a, a couple comments. Uh, Carolyn wrote, happy slapper day. You know, since I'm doing this every Saturday, she called it slapper day, which I, I, I think it's cool. Maybe I should uh accept that as well and she wrote over the moon about the peacocks yeah saw them at the ink and iron in long beach it's been a while since you played it's here a, in the it's States, been right? a while ago yeah i don't even uh, over yeah. 10 years over 10 years i say like maybe 15 years or something i saw you for the first time uh i believe it was san jose uh i remember it was i remember that one yeah 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 that was a fun show. We, we, we talked like for like n not very long, but yeah, you introduced yourself. And... Yeah, 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 it was right after I moved to the States. So it, it's got to be like almost, I mean, 17 or 18 years ago. Really? It, it's yeah. been a while. <laughs> it Was that the show with, with Henchman? I, or... I rather remember who was the opening band, but I remember that it was about, about something like that, about 17 years ago. It was a long yeah. time ago. So, but you sounded great, and then and then I saw you. Where was that in Switzerland when I played with Tiger Army? It was in Zurich. Yeah. Ah, Zurich. Okay. yeah. Are you are you from Zurich? No, I'm from uh, Schaffhausen. That's a okay. pretty small town, maybe an hour north of Zurich. Ah, okay. So it's everything kind of, is, is kind of close. It, it's kind of close in Switzerland. Yeah, one hour, it's just like I plan to go to the beach after this, and then it's going to yeah. take me one hour to get to the beach. <laughs> so so it's, like, yeah, like, it's Los Angeles. It's uh, like, well, it's, it's going to take half an hour, then you're not going, you know? It's, it's yeah, more yeah. like we, we really it's, it's a different approach here in, in, yeah. in LA, for sure. Uh, but yeah, it is what it is. All right, I'd like to start this interview. I'm excited to, to hear about you know your um, your career and everything, and I I think that I know a lot about it. But you know, I think that the world deserves to know to be aware of it uh, more. And we've got like a few more comments, so I'm gonna read that later. Uh, like I, I would like to know how did you start? How did you uh, decided to be a musician, and how did you decide to play upright bass? Um, actually, I I was playing guitar before. I, I always wanted to be a, a guitar player, but I didn't have any friends who were into what I liked. And my older brother, Hazu, he already had a band, uh, 
I don't know. We, they, they didn't have a name, but they made some rock and roll covers. And at some point, he needed a bass player, and he found one. But that that guy was already in another band, a rockabilly band, and lived too far away. So Hasu always said, you have to learn uh, the opera bass. And then I was thinking, OK, then I, at least I can play in a band. So I started to, to play opera bass. Oh, so, so this was practically kind of like your first instrument. And you played guitar for a little bit, and then you you switched on the bass just like to play uh, uh, in a band with your brother. Yeah, I, I I was playing like like just like chords, like like rhythm guitar stuff like that. Uh -huh, okay. And yeah, then I I started directly with with uh, with, with upright bass with the band, which was okay, kind of cool. cool because the the band already. They already had like five shows as the Peacocks with another bass player. Uh -huh. And they were practicing at, at this house where I am now, like that's uh -huh. my parents' house. And I, as I used to live there as well. So I all, always could hear them practice. So I kind of knew the songs already. And that was, which helped a lot, you know? Oh yeah, I bet. And so, but you haven't played on on the first or or first two albums, right? Or you or you played on all albums of the Peacock? I played on all the albums. Ah, you played all the albums. Okay, I thought that the, no, they, or, they they just had uh, five shows or something. They did oh, the demo okay, at the very beginning. Okay. Yeah, they did the demo like five songs, but that's never saw the light. Uh, oh, they, okay. they, they never came out. Yeah. Okay, you you're the original Peacock. Kind of, not really, but uh, yeah, yeah. Um, and is it, I'm, I'm not super familiar. Is the drummer the, still the same guy from the original li lineup, or you changed it? No, that's uh, we changed the drummer a few times. The, the first one he left after five years or something. Mm -hmm. Ah, okay, right before we, right before we, we had the chance to, to make a US tour. He left, and then we took our younger brother David for the oh. tour. But he wasn't the drummer, so he, he, he just came for the tour. And after that U.S. tour, we, we were looking for a new drummer, which was uh, Tony. Uh, he did two two albums: I think. Angel and In Without Knocking. That was with Tony and. Tony had to leave after seven years or something because, uh -huh. had, yeah, like family and stuff like that. So then we had uh, Jörg, he's the new new drummer, but he's in the band for the longest time, so almost 20 years now. Wow. Oh. Yeah. Well, that's good. It's good to have like a... The, the, a the, the lineup now is the longest. Uh, the longest? Okay. Yeah. Well, when, did, when did you start the Peacocks? 1990. 1990? 1990, yeah. Oh, wow. But I, I joined the band in, in 91. Wow. So that was my first show. Yeah. Well, that, that's over 30 years. It's over 30, yeah. Yeah. How many albums you have? I, I oh, know, I, you know, for me, you're still young, Dan. I'm not counting. <laughs> Uh, I don't know. Actually, uh, we have uh, Call Me Fast, In Without Knocking, Angel, It's Time For. Uh, I don't know. Maybe 10 albums or something. 10 albums. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Wow, cool. All right. So, do you play any other instruments? Do you still play that guitar? I haven't played much guitar since since my son was born eight years ago, so I, did, I uh -huh. never had time. So, but I still now I kind of start again because he's, he's eight years, and I can play music with him. And yeah, oh, that, that, but that, I'm still not good in guitar. <laughs> yeah, that's that's basically that's all I can play is guitar and, and bass yeah. or on my bass. I'm I'm. I'm not so good in electric bass because I never practiced that. 
I know how that goes. Yeah, I had like a couple of gigs when I had to play electric bass, but it was never, never my thing. Um, Carolyn wrote like Simon doesn't look old enough to have been in a band since 1991. Just just, that's the because I met the light in the right position <laughs> <laughs> uh luca wrote simon is the man uh yeah, yeah no, luca, yeah juan train wrote cheers from zurich happy to catch a live slap stream again uh and Caudry charlotte wrote saw the peacocks live a couple of times years ago fantastic bass player thank you so people are stoked that you're here with us uh do you i would like to hear you play a little bit at the beginning do you guys yeah. see a uh, uh, bass behind you Can yeah you I brought, actually i i wanted to bring my bass which i actually use but we, we didn't practice this week so i i didn't have the chance to ah, okay to go to the studio i, I brought the the bass i have at home which is a, a fully carved uh-huh the bass I don't, I don't uh, use it on, on, on the road, of course. Okay. Because it's, it's, it's too, how to say, it's too, too nice. dangerous. Yeah. It's going to crack or it's something. probably fragile. But it's, it was used on, on a few albums. Oh, cool. Yeah. So, All I, right. so I, I have to play something. I actually don't really know what to play. It's, but I usually... Do is like if, if a song is fast, I I try to make it easier with with um, kind of like rhythm, different rhythms like like so, something like that. <laughs> Stuff like that. I like like a lot of of um, especially the psychobilly bass players. They 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 play like fast like. I, I don't know the, the, how to say it. it's like like something like and and I usually do more like that's, that's yeah uh, actually it's it's hard for me to play uh, a song if there's not the music going you know you you understand that. Uh, yeah, bass is music. So, uh, sorry? I said bass is music. It's not that there's no music. You're yeah, but I'm not used to uh, play just bass. I understand. I like to play really? solo without a guitar or a piano or something. There's even uh, most of the songs I, I can't even play if if there's not uh, the others not joining. Uh huh. Well, you already played a little bit for us, and then, you know, I appreciate that. And I'll ask you again. I'd like to play later on during the show, and then maybe our guests have, uh, I mean, our audience have, like, some questions. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. can ask you as well. How, how's been, how, how are things with the, with the COVID over there in, in, in Switzerland? Is it getting better or, or not? Uh, it's... We actually do. I don't don't really know. It's 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 kind of getting better. Mm -hmm. Like um, bars are open and oh, you can go inside without a mask and all of that. Um, let me think. I've, if you you have to wear a mask if you go inside, but okay. as soon as you're sitting, you you can take it off. Uh -huh. outside, you you don't, oh. don't yeah because you can't. <laughs> Drink with with a mask, and okay. outside you don't need a mask if you go to a restaurant, but you have to register, you know, put your uh -huh. name, phone number, and stuff. And there are even like nightclubs or, or shows, but then you have to be tested or vaccinated. Yeah, or what's the or you had already you were. Aha! Uh -huh. Okay, so you already had Corona before. Yeah. So, but I, I heard that the, there's a new uh, strain of the virus. Delta. Yeah, Delta. So it's I don't know. It's it's we have shows coming up in in uh, September, 
Uh-huh. So I, I, sure hope, I hope they're going to happen, but you never yeah, know. No, like I only have like some sh shows scheduled uh, for October. Yeah. Uh, in Los Angeles with Tiger Army for the October Flame. Uh, but who knows what's going to happen? You know, like yesterday or like today, they're uh, they're introducing masks again. So All right. Like yeah, until like in your today, area you or... no masks, but now it's again you have to wear a mask inside. Yeah, yeah. it's uh, it's a drag, but you know it is what it is. We'll we'll do, we'll survive. Yeah. Um, yeah. What have you been doing during during this pandemic thing? Well, yeah, that's the bad thing. I have to. I had to work because I I need somehow I have to earn money and mm -hmm. it's it's. It's if you have your life focused on music and kind of live from, uh, I mean, it's I, I kind of live from the music, mm -hmm. and all the jobs I had were like made shitty side jobs. They they they're okay, but it's it's not like something which makes me happy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And now I have uh, I have to work really hard, like I. Some days I work like 15 hour shifts. Like during the day, I'm a guard at the museum. Mm -hmm. And at night, I work in a bar. Mm -hmm. So I work the whole day. So it was easier to earn money with, with music because it's something, it's, it's also needs a lot of time. If you go on tour or just one show, you drive the whole day. And it's also like, 15 hours maybe but it's something you i like you know it's, oh, it's yeah, absolutely different. how many shows do you usually play with the peacocks per year before the pandemic we, we already went uh with lesser shows since we we have uh kids uh -huh. but we we all mostly played the weekends so it's it's like still like 60 70 shows a year oh okay yeah um it's good it's good to be busy with music it's it's and hard like to change you know your life lifestyle completely um so so if i understand correctly the peacocks were the, the first band that you joined right yeah is that the, the only band that you ever played in your life uh no i Used to play uh, some shows with with a band called Mars Attacks. Uh huh. Okay, um, I heard about that band. It's, it's more traditional rockabilly, right? It's traditional rockabilly. Yeah, you have to dress up like like they used to in the fifties. Okay. It's kind of fun, yeah. Or yeah. what? Because they they split up. Okay. So yeah. were you the uh, the, the the only bass player that that band had? No, they had a they had a bass player which left the band at some point and. Because I, I already uh, used to replace him for like I, I did the Australia tour with oh, the really? band okay. before already. So they asked me again if if I want to join them after their bass player left for forever. So I I said yeah, but I don't ha really have the time because I already play with Peacocks, but. Yep. But it was fine for them. But then after two years or three years, they played up. Well, it was kind of hard because we don't. I kind of understand because it was hard to to keep it together because we all live from in different areas, so huh? which makes makes it very difficult, like to practice and stuff. And I I played um, guitar with a, a band. I was singing and playing guitar with a band. We were called the Silver Stairs, and we just it was was a fun project just for a New Year Eve's party. Mm -hmm. And I was yeah, it was kind of like uh, '60s garage stuff, like mostly covers. So not, not really a serious. Yeah, yeah, but I I really like what Peacocks are doing. I always did, you know, since the since I think the second album that you had, and it's um, 
because you I think that you had like your original sound and it it the band sounds a little a little edgier and a little different. Who were your influences as on on a band back back when you started? Do you remember? When we started. Yeah. Because well, were, uh, in the beginning you were a little different. You were not psychobilly band per se. You were not a rockabilly band or this rockabilly you had your own thing you you always had like a sky influence or that's at least how i saw it i mean in the, in the really beginning we were like uh, a cover band we, we played lots it, it was the psychobilly stuff which was uh, uh, was out back then in the the 80s so we, we did even we did like torment covers we did uh or we covered like the songs um guana bats covered already like like bruce springsteen so we covered that as well or or uh yeah the, the rolling stones number that uh torment covered we, we did that we, so we, we kind of like I kind of like thought we, we maybe sound like Torment or Long Tall Texans. Like, like yeah, kind of like that Psycho Billy without this, uh, this uh, voice. Uh, like now, nowadays, a lot of Psycho Billy bands try to sound like, like Sparky. We didn't have that. It, it was more like, I thought that, Back then, all the psychobilly bands had had their unique um, style. Like Friends had their style, uh, Torment, Crewman, Meteors, and so we had at some point our own style. That's at least what I thought. And oh, yeah, I absolutely agree. And that's what I. That's one thing that I like about the Peacocks, and I love that you always were writing your own songs. Um, are you a songwriter as well, or it's mostly your brother? I kind of, I'm not used to write songs. One thing is, I I don't know what to write about. I mean, I can, I could uh, write uh, melodies or stuff like that, but not lyrics. I, I'm too bad. Uh -huh. at that. But you write melodies and 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 chord progressions, bass lines, and all of that, or it's yeah, sure. I mean, it's. It, it, it's it's like I, I in the beginning I I try to bring my own songs as well, but it, it's it's kind of hard to how to describe them the ideas to the others. Uh -huh. And and now it's it's like or it it was like most of the time it, it, it's like Hazu has an idea. Sometimes it's more. Sometimes it's it's just a few things. And he starts playing with guitar and, and, and does some singing. Usually it's just uh, fake English uh -huh. because it's not a song already. And then we just join, you know? Sometimes it's like, I hear what he plays something and then I start to hear in my ear, I, I uh, or me in my head, I, I start to hear something i i try to play that on the bass and the drummer he tries to keep the rhythm i do or it's reversed the drummer he does some rhythms and i try to fill in that rhythm so it, it's usually it, it, it's so it's it's a group all, effort that usually starts with with uh, hasu's ideas yeah it's it's then then it's kind of like jamming all together and it, it's the, the final product can be very very different from the first from the uh, I, yeah the initial idea yeah that's actually the best way i would say you know when you everybody can uh pinch in and then you get the the uh something like a group effort so and that's kind of like what i what i like the most uh, yeah. If you had to compare the Peacocks with another band, which band would you compare it to? Oh, <laughs> with, with which band? Yeah. That's really hard. So do you consider yourself still a psychobilly band? I never was in that, that uh, 
like the actually no i i would say maybe also like it's maybe an indie band or it's sometimes it's even a country band or a, a a rock band or pop or it's for me psychobilly it's something different you know it, it's we have a lot of songs which has they, they don't have much to do with with psychobilly or rockabilly so and some songs they 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 really close like some some songs i think kind of sound like batmobile maybe but or yeah maybe but that wasn't the plan it's just yeah, yeah. Really yeah. Play song. it's i think it's oh this is kind of like sounds like batmobile of course of course you you go where in any direction you want to go you don't want to limit yourself or in the beginning we we kind of like sounded like long tall texans i don't know if you know them oh yeah of course and i even once had a talk with 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 them and they said oh, in the beginning you want to sound like us and now we want to sound like you oh really oh cool <laughs> kind of funny yeah but oh, still yeah. i don't think that it's where it's kind of the same music but it's still it's it's it's, it's different slab bass so yeah of course that's the, the <laughs> that's the coolest ingredient exactly. um, did you for your bass playing did you have any formal education any lessons or like how did you learn to play books videos what did you do no unfortunately there weren't any videos available back then like in the early 90s late 80s that there was i didn't even had a video player but i i also think there wasn't uh, any uh, we, we didn't have internet, so it, it was just listening to the record and trying to copy that stuff. You know, it's like I say, it's like I tried to to copy Batmobile or or Bill Haley stuff, like like stuff where you can where there's a kind of like the bass mixed in front, like like a lot of those. Uh, early 80s uh rockabilly or ne neo rockabilly bands like the deltas or rattlers or blue cats there's they, they also always have a loud uh, kind of like a loud or early early frenzy they have a loud uh, upright bass so you can hear that very good so that was kind of like stuff i tried to to copy uh, that's how I learned. It's I, I love that production, and then I, I don't do it that often on my own records, uh, but I love it, and it's I always enjoy listening to those bands that you that you mentioned as well. Um, if you can you tell me and describe, I would say how things changed for you as a musician since you started until now. The whole music business, not just uh, music or bass playing. All right, the whole. Well, when we started, I, 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 I didn't had a plan. Uh, that I, 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 I didn't plan to be a musician. I just wanted to, to play bass so, because I, I thought, oh, that sounds cool. So I tried to, to figure out how that works and. Then uh, it just I, at the beginning we weren't even thinking of of uh, doing shows or something. It was just we were just practicing, and at some point people were asking, "Can you play there or there?" And we started just to play like like just backyards or like birthday parties and stuff like that. And and every every show somebody saw us and we could play somewhere else and so we started to play more and more and a friend of ours back then he was like the first guy at that time who had a internet a email address which was 
for me was like wow so he kind of managed to to make us a, a u.s tour and we, we that was like in 96 or something and we went there and that was kind of like the point for me when i was like okay that that's that's cooler than than go to school or study or work and i want to do that and, and soon after i i kind of quit uh, studying and decided to to play what changed is is that i think back then like you could play like long tours we play like a, a month every day and that's something which is almost impossible now i don't think that somebody comes to see us on a monday night that's i think that that really changed a lot nobody goes out for to see bands anymore if it's not a weekend i don't know yeah it's getting harder and harder for for live music and Hopefully, I mean, fingers crossed, you know, after this uh, end of the world pandemic thing, you know, people gonna would like to start partying again and go go out more. So I think that lots of people actually is now more aware of what music. Means. I mean, it, it's not the main problem that that um, we, we still have a good crowd every the most places we play. But also what changed is that the, the venues have a lot of of uh, how to say like stuff they need to do for the the government like they have to fill papers and stuff like it, it's it's getting more and more complicated i think back then we just played somewhere in, in, in a house or like a small club and there weren't any rules you know sometimes it even ended up that we were after the gig working at the bar and making out the drinks for everybody and and now it's like we need to show your passport you need to write an invoice you need to fill like tax numbers and you need to have uh, a lot of paperwork especially when you you're traveling abroad like like if you as Europeans, if you want to tour the US, it's it's like it's complicated. It's not, not just uh, take the plane and go there. It's it's like you need to have a lawyer who makes the paperwork, and then you have to go to the embassy, and then it, it's it's and costs you a lot of money. It's it's getting. And I remember the first time it just went there. You know, those were the nineties. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> yeah, and even very easy to. I just, I, I, I remember that the first tour in '96, I had a, a huge case for the bass. Mm -hmm. That was like a hard case, like what that was huge, and it was no problem. We went to the airport, and then oh, cool, double bass, and, and everybody was so helpful. Uh huh. And um, now it's 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 a pain if you arrive oh. base at the airport. Oh, we have to check if it's a bomb inside, and, and then I you remember, have. You know, back in the nineties, there were like a few times that I brought a plane, uh, a base inside of the plane. You know, next to me. You know, where yeah. I was. Yeah. Uh, I, I, once or twice, I even put it in a in a. They were like cool, like for me to put it in a, in the bathroom. So they're like, yeah, yeah, it's okay. People are just gonna use the other ones. Yeah, so, exactly. So, so I, it was definitely easier, um, but I don't think that's gonna be like that anytime soon. But uh, but who knows? I mean, yeah, we don't know. Uh, I hope so. You know, I hope it's gonna get get easier. But it's definitely getting harder and harder. And it's still fun, though. Still the coolest job you can have. It's still fun, yeah. I mean, we, we had like five shows during like last year. And, you know, one show, everybody was wearing a mask and it was like just 50 people allowed to go in and they have to be sitting at the table. 
like like all like stuff which which isn't fun, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so I thought, you know, before I thought like, okay, let's do that show, but it's probably not going to be fun. But because we were playing elsewhere, so I, I still enjoy myself so much. It was, it was like, at least, you know, yep. play. How is it in the US? Do you have had any chances to play or? I did like some some uh, some small shows, and I do. I always have like a few things going on at the same time. But as far as the bigger shows like Tiger Army or Moto or the stuff that I usually do, um, it did not come back on that level. Yeah. We're gonna ha we have a, a couple of shows scheduled with the Tiger Army for October, but that's about it for now. Yeah. Well, you know, we're talking about more touring and touring. But who knows when that's going to happen? You know, it 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 might it might be a bit until that happens. Uh, Christopher Henry uh, asked you, do the Peacocks have plans for a new album or U.S. tour? Uh, he lives in Oklahoma, and he also wrote, your music reminds me of Social Distortion. Uh, we definitely have uh, plans for a new album because it's already recorded and mixed so it, it's basically it's finished but we don't know when it's going to be out because the, they can't tell us because the the pressing plans they they have a huge uh, waiting line so it's probably not going to be this year it's that's that's it's kind of sad because we, we already recorded the album uh, last year and we kind of then we kind of waited because we thought it makes no sense to put out a, an album now and we finished mixing it early this year and yeah now we, we don't know when it's coming out so and we also don't know we haven't made any plans yet for nothing so uh, all original songs yeah we that. did uh, i don't need i think it's like 12 songs on the it's gonna be on the album we recorded like 14. we always always uh, record more than than oh, nice. so then you choose the the best ones yeah or maybe uh, not maybe not the best but the, the songs which fit the most yeah, the ones that, that create a story yeah well like sometimes you have like too many similar songs so then then there's no need for like four times the same song yep. with different lyrics like i mean oh, yeah. you know what all right um and and uh, they wrote Roe just wrote a comment. Hey, Georgia, Dave Roe here. Great guest. Very cool. Do you know who Dave Roe is? Actually, no. <laughs> I'm really bad in names. Bass so... player for Johnny Cash. Oh, wow. I featured him uh, a couple months ago. Yeah. Excellent. He showed like really cool, uh, really cool lick that it's that I think that lots of people uh, accepted. Uh, and then Bob Moore showed him that. So I thought. That was a really cool story. So, yeah. hi, Dave. Thanks again. Oh, for part of the I, I will have to check some some stuff out. You There's already. only 54 episodes, 53 episodes. Yeah, it's a lot. It's a lot. I just yeah. saw that, that you did uh, with, with the Cochran, uh, Eddie Cochran bass oh, player. Yeah. I know. Eddie Cochran's bass player. Yeah. And may, when I have time, I will, will have I definitely have to check some episodes well they're all there you know I'm, I'm i'm doing them you know for the eternity so that people can <laughs> you know, get informed about all these great players you know in the future as well and i would like to i would like to ask you like to play something more can we yeah we still have that bass behind you so all right what what i actually want to show you but I, i'm not going to play on that one I have because I'm at my parents' home and there is still the first base I had. Oh cool. Let's see that. I, I just show you because 
it has some nasty cracks, you know. Maybe you can see that. Oh yeah. And that that's everywhere. It's like like real bad cracks and stuff like that. Oh wow. That was the first base I had, and I, I painted it blue because I thought it's cool. Which now I think it's not so cool. But <laughs> And it has a nice tone, actually. A nice warm tone, but it's not playable anymore. So I'm going to play. Yeah, what, sh what shall I play? Whatever you feel like. And then I will, after that, I will ask you about a slap bass terminology that you're using. Should I play some? Whatever you feel like. And as long as you feel like. OK. <laughs> one more time but before that like i would like you to uh, show me the different slap bass patterns that you play and i would like to to ask you what is the terminology that you're using okay uh well there's there's one it's it's like the i call probably completely different than others it's for me it's like the the most played uh slap is for me it's the double slap it's like that's for me i call them double slap it's like i i take the string it slaps back and i go back with my mind and so it's, it's kind of like one note two slap sometimes when the the, the music is it's like a straight beat it, it's kind of like doesn't work with the drums so i, I just do like single slaps like 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 so i kind of try to avoid to make a, a second slap when i go back like instead of that then uh another slap i used to call them the i call them the cowboy slap because it, it kind of like sounds like a uh, a guy on, on the horse. Like that, like. Maybe, I don't know if you can see it. Like, like that. And then I have the, uh, the, the one which is the, I call the triple slab. And then. If sometimes you, you combine uh, just that this stuff you know then, then you have like everything mixed that's about it You're still there? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm here. Yeah. Sorry, sorry. I had a little, little issue here. <laughs> um, lots of people loved like you, what you played. Uh, Carol, let me let me show you all these hand claps. Hand claps, yeah. <laughs> Jose wrote incredible. Tara, 
hand claps. Uh, Carolyn is asking you what is Simon's favorite Peacock song? Hmm. That's a tough question. It's it's actually it's usually one of the new uh, it, uh, the new stuff because it's 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 all new to me, you know. Uh, it's just uh, one song we did for the the new album, but it's not slapped. It's like. It's, it's like, like, like something like that. That's gonna be on the the new album, so it's not slapped. Uh, I like. Uh, hmm. I like. I don't know. If it's, uh, I like Chris, or, or something Chris like wrote that. that the Peacock's rehash boogie is his favorite. All right. Yeah. I I haven't played that for years, so I have no. I have no idea even how that sounds. That's funny. Yeah, we have so many songs, you know. Oh yeah, I mean, you told me ten albums. If you have ten albums, oh man, that's. I probably just remember ever. that this one has kind of like a middle middle uh, part where I I do peace as well, pizzicato. Yeah, but it's 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 a cool song, I think, but I I don't really remember. Yeah. Well, you have a thirty years, you know, of Peacock, so it's hard to hard to remember everything. Um, how about like, so are you using any other slaps, or that's pretty much it? That's pretty much it, I think. Um, I always want to make sure that I ask everybody. Oh man, my camera is going crazy. Uh, Maybe I don't know. You know, it's 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 like I'm not like. I can do like this, all these different slaps, and then that's that's a. I think it's a mistake a lot of bass players do is like they learn some crazy slaps and they overplay. And they have to fill it in somewhere, uh -huh. even if it doesn't fit. You know? And if 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 the song, most of the time the, the song doesn't ask for some crazy stuff. Yeah, and I mean, sometimes it does, and maybe I'm, I'm I'm not able to play it, so I have to kind of like learn it that it fits for that. There's yeah, there's all these like slap bass patterns that you know. The, the slap is great as long as you know how to use it, and if it's musical thing, if it's not just you forcing it in it. So it's um. It's um, it's something that you have to be careful. It, I, I love slap when it's part of the arrangement. That's kind of like my favorite way, like to 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 approach it. Um, I would like to ask you a little bit about the, the gear that you're using. Uh, so how many bases you have? Uh, I have quite a lot of bases. Oh really? Yeah. Which, which ones? Uh, how how many bases and which ones are those? I don't even know how many I have. Uh, the thing is, I, I kind of like start to, you can't say collect, but it, it was like when I started to play um, bass, it's what was hard to get one, you know? It, it, it wasn't, you, there were like that these huge music stores, but they only have basses for like classical music. And, the, I mean, the, the, the base you need for, for rockabilly or psychabilly or if you go on the road is, is, a, is a, a laminated base, which is much stronger. But there was, there was no market at all when, when I started. So it, that, that's why I, the, the first base, I, I, the blue one, I bought, it's, 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 it's a fully carved. But, you know, after a few shows, it, it started to fall apart because... If you hit somewhere, it starts to crack. So I had to. Then I found an ad in a in a newspaper, and uh, I called that guy, and he had a bass laminated, which was a um, um, East German. I think it's the same model, which um, Oliver from Hillbilly Moon Explosion uses. Oh, okay. 
which was like like that orangey brown color at the beginning i i made it black after a few years i start i painted it black is that I, a cutaway base sorry is that a cutaway base no no i i now have a cutaway which is which is a a, a okay. frame yes cutaway with those white uh, linings i bought that framers because on one u.s tour the even the base my base was in a hard case they the, the, the head snapped off in the plane so i needed to have a, a, another uh, strong base for, for the road because it always takes a while until it gets fixed so i i just uh, so an ad in my town for an old framers, which was cool. I had to fix the the neck. Neck was was off, but that was was kind of like an easy fix. And I have yeah, that that's the base I actually use now and for like the last at least fifteen years. Or so. And. The base that the one before I still have, and I was using this base for the when I was playing with Mars Attacks. I did some um, got strings on it, and because with um, Picos, I'm using uh, Roto Sounds. Then I have a K, a K, a US K, because uh, that's for me, that's kind of like that base, you know, that's it's like. All the, the guys had the K, you know, Elvis Presley, I don't know the Elvis Presley, but <laughs> you know what I mean? Like all the old rockabillies, they, they, they were playing with K's. And I was the first uh, US tours or Canada tours I did, I was renting bases and I, I was renting like a few times I was renting a K and I thought like, that's, that's cool. They, they're not better, but they just have that sound. It just sounds like like old rockabilly stuff, you know. And so I, I sometimes they pop up in uh, for sale in in Germany because the the U.S. Army brought them over after the war or during the war, and never brought them back. So it's it's all like the, sometimes can if you're lucky you can find a very early like thirty. 30s K base in Germany. Now the prices are going up, but yeah, I was like kind of lucky, like 1500 something I paid. Yeah, I have a K. And that, that brown uh, carved base I have. Then I have another cutaway, which uh, somebody gave me for free. And I, I wanted to sell it but i don't know it's it, if somebody wants to buy it i would sell it but I, i'm not like going to ask people you want to buy it. if somebody asked me do you have a base for sale it would be that base okay and i, I once had a, a a german base also a cutaway hope you know that i don't like, they have they have like the, the kind of like cat eye uh, f holes. They did. It didn't have f holes. Uh -huh. It had like like just like a weird shape. Um, it it was a base from the fifties or sixties, also from Germany. And I I bought it from from I think it was the manager from a famous German rockabilly band. And when I came home with the base, somebody else asked me if I have a base for sale. And it was like, okay, you can have this one. Because I I, I didn't have a, a relationship yet with the base. But if you have, if I have a base for too long, it's 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 gonna be hard. To, so I have too many bases actually. Yeah. So you have and, relations with all your bases. Yeah. And at some point, I, I wanted to kind of like learn to repair bases. Uh -huh. So I went to uh, G 
Germany to a violin maker, and I made a bass there. Oh wow! Do you have that bass still? I, I still have it, but it's it's at the moment it's it's I I, I made a mistake with the fingerboard, so I I need to. Can you fix it? I already uh, put on a new fingerboard, but I have to make the the right shape in it. <laughs> okay. Because it has to be like it it off? now it's straight, you know. Oh, but okay. The fingerboard isn't straight. You know what I mean? Yeah, 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 yeah. You have to sand it off, like to make it more. Yeah, it's it's, it's like like it, it has to be a, a little little uh, curve, you know. Mm -hmm. But I, I, I didn't have the time so far. So. Uh, well, okay. Yeah, I didn't know that you know how to make bases. That that's really. I, cool. I don't. I don't know how to make bases, but it's kind of like possible nowadays because you can buy like like already like stuff who is kind of like pre-made. Mm -hmm. You can buy an egg, which is kind of like. Ah, okay. So you would you know, be able with a machine, and then you have to do like the all the the, the fine like like parts. So you can like buy a top, which is like just like. So you know how to put it together. Yeah, you you have to put it together and do like like the details. I, I didn't like carve to, from a big okay. block or something from the scratch. Uh, so you don't know how many bases you have. Like ten bases over maybe 10, bases. ten, yeah, maybe ten bases. Wow, that's a lot. Uh, like I think that from all the slapstream guests, I think that Didi Didi back had the most bases, but it might be you. I don't know. <laughs> um, yeah, but some some like uh, some are like really like projects. I wanted. I want. I'm, I mean, also the blue one. I want. I think it has a nice sound, but I won't make it playable again. But yes, I understand. Um, as far as other gear goes, like uh, uh, you mentioned that you like rotor sound strings. Do you have rotor sounds on all your bases? No, I have uh, rotor sounds uh, on the the live bass I use. Uh -huh. What are the other the, the other strings that you like? The ones that you use. I have uh, on on the K. I have uh, God strings because I think it's it's. Uh, it's that bass from from back then, and you need that same sound, so it has to be got strings. It, that's for me. It's, it's just makes no sense for me to try something to make it sound like got strings because it's easier to just take got strings. Then it's. Uh, I think I don't know the brand. It's maybe Lenzner or something. And some bases have, I have, they have steel strings because they were all already on it, you know. Yeah. I, and I try, I kind of like uh, had a, a like, a, a kind of like some time I, I, I tried to figure out new stuff and uh, new strings and try to like, like, Different strings, but I always came back to Rodo sounds for for live stuff and and got strings for for traditional. And yeah, I, I sometimes I also for recordings I kind of like uh, like the news who's coming out. I, I had just one bass, but the ones before I I was kind of like switching. Like, there were like songs where I thought it, it's it's gonna be sounding better with with uh, God strings. I think that it has a boomier sound. Something. And I once tried to record with, with steel strings, but wasn't happy with the sound. Does didn't fit with with what we do. I think. It's, uh, ah, it's interesting. You know, if I if I had to. To, to choose you know like for always for that kind of edgier sound i usually pick the seal strings i like guts you know for traditional sound but i you know i i always play steels i 
thing is that I I prefer the piezo sound over the okay. Oh, me too, for sure. And I think that if you record or you you play steel strings with piezo, the the slap sound is really aggressive. Ah, okay. And if if, if like like. Nowadays we're we're much slower, but we had like a, a period where we had a lot of fast songs, and it was like with steel string was just like really like too too noisy for me. Too much, huh? Yeah. Uh, what is your preference like for the pickups and for the amps? Um, I. I, I just can say what I have. It's it's I have um, the K and K that system where you have like uh, slap and and the, the piezo for the bridge, which is wired together. So I don't only have like one uh, cable going to the PM, like a stereo. I have a stereo cable, which is just one. Which contains the signal from both pickups, like for the slab, which is under the bridge, uh, under the fingerboard, and the, that for the the nodes, which is on the bridge. So I go with one cable with both signals to a preamp, which is called um, I think it's called DTAR or something. They don't make it anymore. I think it's it's kind of similar to the the one. Um, K and K offers as well, but the K and K ones needs batteries, and the, the guitar you can plug it in the, the power plug. So I go in there, and there I can mix both signals and go with one uh, lead to the amp. So I can like both both signals in one. The bad thing is it's it's kind of like weak. The, the, I have a sometimes I, I have a lot of problems, like the, the bad cable or bad like uh, buzzing somewhere. And then you have to find out where is it coming from. And, you know. So now I kind of like gave up, and it's it's just like it's, it's, I'm getting older. <laughs> Even maybe I don't look like that, but yeah, it's. it's I, I even found out that that uh, probably it doesn't really matter. What what? It's, it's, I mean, I, I I remember one show when when that stereo cable broke, and then I have just a normal lead cable, so I just had one one pickup working, so no slab pickup. And I, I think the, 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 audience, the audience didn't notice that. It was just me. So. I mean, those slight differences can change the sound, but I think that us as bass players are probably the only ones that actually can can hear those subtle differences. But your audience always listen to the whole sound. And if exactly. It's, if it's nothing that it's kind of annoys them, or that is di disturbing the, the 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 sound of the band. It's usually fine. Yeah, because when it was starting to to break, the bass stopped. So uh, it was better just to change the cable and and have a, a different. It, I mean, it it was just a different sound. I mean, it's at the end, it's it's hard to say. Is it better or worse or it's not perfect, but I mean the perfect sound I, I it's you don't even have in the studio you it's hard to get the perfect sound because it has to to work with with the sound of the drum kit, with the guitar sound. You can't make your sound you have to make compromises, you know. Because if you have a really distorted guitar, for example, and your frequencies are too close, it doesn't work. You, nobody can hear you. 
you know what I mean? Absolutely. It's uh, it's essential to make. A, I mean, that's a that's a job, producer's job. If they they're able to make the whole thing sound nice together, that's the whole point. You know, like each instrument to play to to sound good by itself doesn't mean much. I, mean, I, I wanted. I remember that for the first uh, recordings we did, I wanted to have the same sound. Uh, Batmobile had on their oh, first really? because that was what was like for me it was that sound was just about perfect. that sound I think it's a lot about the volume of the bass because of all the bass is really loud on those it's so loud and in front and yeah yeah but on the other hand then I mean I think Batmobile back then didn't had a, a full drum kit right uh, I don't remember. I mean, I, I, I remember those they, records, but I, I'm, I'm not sure what the drummer used. I think they, they didn't have a, a kick drum or something. Huh. So there was like a part of the drum king kind of missing. Then the other thing is he played, I think back then he on, on that record, he played a, a telecaster with, with, which has a like really sharp uh -huh. sound, you know? So then you, you can make a different bass sound, but if you have like a full drum kit, a rock drum kit, it's probably not working the same bass sound. It's a different, different approach for sure. And do you use anything else besides uh, the, the amp, a preamp, uh, pickup strings? Do you use any effects or something? No. no, I I once uh, tried for like uh, a year or so. I was trying to put a, a it's called a feedback killer. It was kind of like a effect which uh, which kind of like cuts off the the frequencies which make made um, a feedback. But then uh, I mean, if you play on a small stage then there's always like kind of like noise and stuff and it started to cut off more and more frequencies and then after a while it just had like a thin sounding bass so i had like to make the make the effect just to stop to take off the frequencies just maybe the, the four burst uh, feedbacks, but then after a while, I was thinking, okay, it's just too many gear for for nothing. You know? So I actually I, I never use that. It's it's I found out it's, it makes no sense actually. <laughs> it's it's easier yeah. just go straight. I mean, I the sound is in the fingers. Exactly. Yeah, and it's 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 uh, if you start then you don't have that experience so you don't know it's... oh absolutely um when you tour do you always tour with your own bass or do you ever have a um backline bass i like, like when we tour in europe mm -hmm. of course and i play always with my own gear you know because we drive switzerland is that's kind of like good it's in the middle we uh -huh. go to Germany, up north, or going south. We always can go back and relax some days at home, then go west, France, south, Spain, come back, go to England. Do you ever go east? East. Have, 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 you, ever, have you ever gone like to, you know, my part of the world? Like Not Turkey, really. We've Asia, been to... Uh, we've been to Slovenia, Slovenia, Hungary, and yeah. Are you played Hungary? Okay. Yeah, but not so many times. It's it's quite far. Well, there there was one show where we flew in in Hungary for a festival, uh -huh. and there I had a bass from, from very bad. Very bad bass. Okay. But that was, 
it was a smaller base. It was like it was a smaller size base. Oh, okay. Kind of weird, and it had uh, that bumped over streams. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, that's 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 awful. <laughs> it's too soft, you know. You you yeah, can't. Yeah, yeah. It, it, you can't play any dynamics or something. It's just that it's like it's it's like running on a fat mattress. It's like <laughs> oh yeah, I know what you're talking about. I'm not used. It's, it. it's, it's hard when you learn to play one way, you know, to adjust your playing the other way. It's, yeah, it's interesting. Maybe. Uh, what do you say? Yeah, maybe if, uh, if I had to, would have. To, the chance to use it for like a week or so, maybe uh, so. to to to, to adjust your style. Sure, I mean you can you can get used to anything, but it's, it's and yeah. Thing. Where else did I? I mean, we, we went to Japan and uh, first oh, cool. first Japanese oh, that? the first uh, tour we did. I I was taking bass from there, and the second tour I brought my own. And we did like five U.S. tours, or something. And in the beginning, I I always took my own bass. And just like the last one, I just had some rentals. Also, Canada, we were there like five or six times. There, I I I rented sometimes. I I did there a rental. And uh, once we were trying to, we, we played in Canada and we had some other shows in the US coming up and we tried to, to cross the border, which was not a good idea. They didn't let, let us in. So we had all to, to leave our gear in at, at the border. We, we, we found some private house where we could uh, put all our gear in the living room. <laughs> And then we went to Chicago, and I had to rent a new base. How was that? Do you have to do any adjustments, like when you have a backline base like that, or do you just leave it the way it is? Um, as far as I remember, I, I, I mean, I, I brought my, my. I took uh, my my pickups, of course, and strings because that rental you, you don't know what to get. You know? That's uh, basically what I did, and it was an okay base. It was a, a white uh, K base, right? Painted. It was okay, not the best base, but it was strong and did did its job. What's your what's the favorite base that you have? Probably hard to choose. It's hard to choose, actually. I I, I would say it's my my K base from thirty nine oh. because I think it's the for me that's the the top of the. It, it can't get more beautiful than like it has the violin shape, but maybe it's it's just because it's 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 the base where where you like uh, connected with with fifties rockabilly. Maybe it's just because of that. I mean, I kind of like the for some reason it's it's weird. It's like. I kind of like the cutaway, but kind of like no, because it, kinda, it makes no sense that uh, for me the opera bass has a cutaway. There, there's no reason for it. So you can just play it when when you like it, and when you don't like it, you don't. You just grab one of other basses. No, I I mean that that, that cutaway. It's it's the bass. Yeah. I like to play on it because, but it's it's it's. It's made. I made it that I like. It. Yeah, yeah. It's a little strange. Um, as far as your bass playing goes, like who would you say were the biggest influences? Uh, 
I mean, probably. I, I, I'm really bad with names. That's I, I don't want to be rude to 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 that, those musicians. So I, I don't. You know, when I I started, it was like that. Batmobile, like I, I, his name is Eric, I think. I like that was a, a huge influence, or or Steve Whitehouse, or, or Sam Sardi from the Guana Bats, or. But I, I like the what Sam Sardi did. Uh, what was like he did, he did a lot of of cool rhythms. That's. I remember that was impressing me. I, yeah, it's it's a lot of those old old early eighties uh, English British uh, psycho or rockabilly bands. But I also like like what like old old fifties. Uh, stuff but i don't know the names because when when you back then you, when i bought a record there was there was like the record says eddie cochran and not not the name of, of, of the bass player or like ricky nelson there wasn't there wasn't any mention of the record sleeve who were they james kirkland played bass with uh ricky nelson yeah. and he was excellent I interviewed him actually for the Art of Slab Bass website uh, a few years ago, and it's still he's still around. He still plays bass, I believe. Yeah, uh, I, I'm, I'll probably try to get him on the Slab stream as well. I should. It'll be fun. To yeah, play I think I think it's, to he's, it's cool. It's 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 something when I was young. I I, I bought those records and those fifties stuff, and I didn't even knew that there is a slap base on it because there was no picture and and there was no mention of i think the only record where you could see a, a, a base was like bill haley where some guys lying on the floor and on his back and there was probably all rex all rex was doing all that crazy stuff marshall yeah. idol played a little bit that stuff as well but Oh, sorry, not Al Rex, Al Rapa. Al Rapa came after Al Rex. So that was like the only record where you could see a, a bass player, and the other records was just like the face of, of, of um, the lead, lead singer, you know? Uh -huh. I understand. First, uh, I didn't notice that there, there, uh, I was, wasn't. I was and, and named one of his songs Gaibo, which is the name of his bass player. I want that. Or something. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, and we, uh, yeah, the sound. I, I, I don't think it's very difficult what he does, but it's, it's just kind oh, of like it's, great. it's cool. It's oh, that's really my great. brother. He's a big, uh, big, uh, he just wrote my younger brother. <laughs> oh, yeah. What did he write? The name of the of Gaibo. Ah, okay. Because he's a big, uh, huge uh, Eddie Cochran fan. I ah, interesting. So he's he's uh, more traditional than his older brothers. No, that's you can't say that actually. He's so into electronic music and stuff, you know. Does he, oh wow! Does he still play? He uh, plays drum? guitar very good. Like he has also like yes, even a guitar who, who looks like the one Eddie Cochran had. So it's it's like he's a really huge Eddie Cochran fan, but he's also in, in all kinds. of yeah. Electronic, huh? Electronic stuff. It does like the. I don't know how the music is called, where you have like a lot of, of machines and cables where you can plug and then make some weird sounds. <laughs> it's, it's, I don't know how, how it, it's called, but he's not like just. So he can explain it to you how to make that uh, modern electronic. Well, it's actually it's it's on the other hand it's not modern because the way they do electronic music now it's probably not with 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 
if uh, all these uh, cables and they just do it on, on, on computers, right? So it's kind of like traditional, <laughs> also kind of like traditional. So maybe, yeah, you can say it's probably into traditional music. <laughs> Traditional electronic, traditional. Does he, does he still play drums? He does when sometimes he does like records where he just plays everything himself. Oh, wow. And he plays the drums. So, will you ask him to join the Peacocks again? Uh, probably not. <laughs> <laughs> We are actually we're, we're really happy with uh, the lineup. It's 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 working well. I mean, oh yeah, I bet. I mean, it's it's, it's also like if you if you're on the road, everybody has like you know how the others are like how they react to their life, yeah. That, or you know, it's it's not like we we don't have to that big talking like we know when. when and we have to load in or you know who's doing the, the the merchandise who's going to go to the promoter and do that money thing and uh, you know who's uh, even if the guy who's going to somebody has to drive to the hotel after the show it's, it's nothing that we you have to talk about that much it just happens you know that that's kind of that's great, you know, that they that, let's make it much easier. Absolutely. I mean, you've been playing for a while together, so it's, I can imagine it that's the only way to be. We we're even uh we're on, on tours with other bands and at some point uh, members of the other band they they said uh, I wanna travel with you guys today because uh, they have a bad mood in the and we actually we, we really rarely have a bad mood. We don't talk that much because yeah, we, we there's nothing to talk <laughs> because we were, we were, if you go through the same stuff, you know, then you have nothing to. It's just somebody's trying, somebody's maybe reading a book, or somebody's just sitting there during the travel, but but we also always have, I, I would say we have a good time on the road. It's just like working smoothly. It's, it's, it's just fine. I'm, That's great. I'm, right. glad yeah, we, I'm like a good drummer, which is not, yeah, I mean, it's oh, hard. Yeah. You're kind of choosing your, your marriage partner when you decide to take someone on the road. Yeah, yeah. It's like, like, like I, I, I told before that when we that our first drummer left just before we went to the U.S. for the first uh -huh. time, and at that time, of course, there were a lot of other drummers were like, "Oh, I want to be your drummer," because they they thought, "Oh, it's cool to go to the U.S." Ah, interesting. But we didn't knew them. If you if you've never been on the road with, with somebody and the first thing you do is a US tour, that's not a good idea. So we took our younger brother, who wasn't really a drummer, but we knew him. And did it how, how was that tour? Um for me it was was the, the the point where I thought it's it's the coolest thing on earth go on tour. On the other hand, there were a lot of shows which didn't happen at the end because it was like all were like like uh, just made with email contact. So some places we arrived and nobody was there, or it was just you realized when you arrived that it's the wrong maybe the wrong part of the town where just the weirdos live or yeah it was, it was a good experience we met a lot of nice people 
you know, it was kind of like a mix at the end. I mean, it was the first time I was in, in America. It was so I enjoyed it. it. It was just like traveling, and I didn't, I didn't have a problem that there were shows which never happened. You know, then we just hung around, drove around, and had the chance to see the, the country. It's, it was not. You were there for music and for for fun. So exactly, yeah, yeah, it was fun. Like we had like supporting like the the slackers in, in uh, the slackers it is a uh, it's a uh, i don't know if they're from brooklyn or not it's a ska band uh -huh. they're on, on hellcat now or maybe they're still are and they were just like before they went bigger just before they went to hellcat records um we, we played with them in, in new york and had a, a a huge crowd there and it was that was a, a, like a, that was a proper show but then we had other shows where like you did sound check and then you fa found out that they forgot to bring in speakers so you had to turn the monitors that uh, audience could hear something we had like a lot of different kind of experiences but that it was cool so when when i came back i was like yeah that's, that's that um yeah the touring states for the first time is always is always an experience it's kind of a little bit of a culture shock but <laughs> especially i mean especially for Europe, europeans but it's great you know I, I still love touring you i mean i love touring the world but us is still kind of special i would like to hear you play a little bit more do you do you have like something like a grand finale great oh what do you want to you want to hear some 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 special thing i don't know i want to hear you your solo slap bass so whatever you want to do oh I never did do a solo, but I. Now is the time. We used to have the the Malo Negra ah, song, which we used to play at the as the, the last song. For many years, we used to play that for the, the, the last song, and uh, there I start with like like kind of like a solo. <laughs> starts uh, all over again where uh, yeah. i like it that's cool. actually it's it's a, a song that i don't really like to play that much anymore because why we've done it so much ah and i don't know it's for me it's not i don't think it's the coolest uh baseline I, I i do you know it's because I, i'm not the i prefer like stuff which are like more into the music itself you know what i mean it's it's that's more, more complex stuff sorry more complex stuff no maybe more easier where, where it's just like it, it, I mean, it's, it's something I can't play now because it's maybe very easy. It's just like, like just like something like that, which is kind of easy. But if you do it at the right uh, moment and it can really fit into to what the music asks for, then I, I kind of like enjoy that more. You know what I mean? The other thing is just like like some yeah i mean crazy like <laughs> 
crazy fast slapping or something which is I, I i understand it's it can be cool for for the fans or like people who want to see something who are into slap bass or haven't that see or haven't seen that before they think like wow but for myself i i i prefer like just like more the relaxed uh, that, uh, that's cool uh, I have um, and I agree with you about that the priority is definitely to keep the rhythm to keep the groove not complicate things if you don't need to um, and be focused on the on the on the sound on the tone um, I have a, a, just one more question for you, but before we do that, I would like to ask you, is, is there anything that I haven't asked you that you might want to mention? Hmm. Something I have to. You don't have to ask him <laughs> anything. Maybe, maybe, I don't know. Right now, I don't know what, what's important. Or I, I don't know what, what pe people uh, want to know. It's, it's... All right, I have a question for you, and I this is more of a philosophical question. Uh, after all these years, you we you've been playing bass for over thirty years or thirty years, and you played in the band, same band for thirty years, uh, mm -hmm. and you are kind of doing lots of similar things. What inspire you to still do, after all these years, everything that you do, and to continue being focused on music? What makes me to still? Uh, it's what I like the most, and makes me continue. Is is like one thing is you always it's i think it's an instrument where you always get better you know it's it's never like you never reach a point where you can say okay that was it it's, it's sometimes it, it happens it doesn't happen much but there are like periods where, where it just goes up and then you think okay now i'm, I'm on a, on a other level that that's that's a cool thing when i notice that i i, I just do something different which maybe it's not only something i i it's maybe no, nobody else will notice but it's just for me that i think now i, I make something different which which Actually, it's true. I think I play completely different as I did 15 years ago, for example. Or that there was. Uh, That's how it should be. Yeah. And the other thing is like, it, it's so great if you're like in, in the same. I mean, when Hasu starts to. comes up with a new idea, he, he just starts to play and we, we, we don't talk about like i don't say like oh what, what are the the, the the chords like uh, there's a c and then there is a f or i just start playing you know he plays a song and i i don't i don't even know how the what the notes are called you know I, if you ask me what are is, is which song like i don't know a song is it in a or is it in e or is it what are you doing there then i don't know you know because i just i, I just hear what hasu is playing and i can just join you know that and then you also like and if you feel also like the drummer is really tied with you 
then then that that's the, the greatest thing you can imagine. It's it's just magic. You know, I'm, <laughs> it's it's hard to explain. I, and you can't if if you are playing with other like I mean I played with Mars attacks. It was fun. It was really fun because it was great guys. But I I had because we, we didn't have the, the time to make new songs. So I kinda like just had to cover the songs the the their original bass player already made. So it, it and and we never had the time to practice that much. So it, it wasn't the same. It's like Now I can, it, it, because we played together that long, that we, we had so many shows, like, I don't know, 2,000 shows or something. I, I just, oh. I, can do it, I can do it blind, you know, or like like deaf, even deaf. And it's it's just like, <laughs> it, it's so, so, it's not getting boring. Because that, it, that's crucial. It, because I don't have to think about how the song is working. Because as soon as as they start, I'm in. You know? And I, I, I music. Yeah, and most of the time, if I want to learn the song at home, uh -huh. I, I don't know how. It, it's just I'm lost. You know? Yeah. But as soon as I play with them. It just works. It's like match, and that that yeah, that, that makes it that you want to keep on going. Was that the question, or was I? I'm like, no, I like when you go out a little bit, you know, because <laughs> I want to see how your music mind functions. So you, you know, because you're inspiring other bass players, and I want them to be aware of your whole persona. And your whole career, so that they know what you. Uh, if they want to analyze your playing and then reach out, kind of be able to play what you do and the way you you think about when you play the, these bass lines. So, and it's also like for other musicians, it's hard like to find inspiration to play after thirty years. You know, playing in the same band, playing same songs. I mean, new songs. But it's hard to find that that drive sometimes for some people. For me, it's not. You know, I don't yeah. know anything else what I would like to do. So it's different. But but in general, yeah, I can I can see that. Um, I mean, it's 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 up up to to yourself. You know, when 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 I started, I was like impressed by Steve Whitehouse and Eric Hamels and. Stop, guys like that and and i tried to i didn't copy the song i was like happy when i did like the, the start I, the first notes when i was able to just make a part of the, their songs and then i was like wow cool and then i started to make my own thing but there's always like others uh, the whole career where, where, where you see other players I mean, at some point, I I, I started to kind of learn uh, the, the, the left hand, you know. Proper when, when, I, when I started, I thought like that, that's shit, you know. That that's that's something the classical guys do. That's that's makes. Uh, and and at some point, I just thought, why not? And I, I tried to kind of like probably I'm not doing it. Uh, Properly, but it kind of helped a lot. That was a, I don't know where where I got this input, but there there must be some other players who inspired me to do that. Maybe you, I don't know. I I once saw a, a video of you where you played some Billy Dixon song, right? and I thought like, oh wow, it's that's a, a guy who, who knows to use the, the left hand as well. So. 
that's probably atomic boogie it's my song it's you know but it i i did incorporate like a, some willie dixon licks so yeah was, maybe uh, was, i don't remember i was just like okay that the guy who who and a lot of, of rockabilly or psychobilly guys they just make like 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 that. oh yeah yeah for me it was essential kind of to to learn the instrument and basically to choose i always wanted to choose I mean, I chose slap bass because I liked it, not because it was the only thing that I was able to play. I wanted to make sure that, I'm, that I am know how to play upright bass uh, in different genres, in different styles, but that I play what I like to play the most. So that was kind of like my, my approach. But I'm glad you, you saw that video. It's a long time ago. That's uh, That video is now 15 years old. <laughs> it's older, maybe. Or not that old. I don't know. 15, 15 years ago. Yeah. It's crazy. Right at the beginning of YouTube. Um, but cool. Do you have any, uh, uh, are there any plans for tours or for, you told me the new album? Yeah, as I said, it's, we, we, we wanted to, but you know, before that, any touring? We are not, uh, as I said, we don't really have plans. Like, like, we have to plan to put that album out and, Probably even do a video clip. Uh -huh. we, we never did that actually, <laughs> but because there, it, it, at the moment it's hard to tour. Yep. And yeah. also because we don't know when the the album is coming out, so we might make a, a video clip that we can show something before the album is coming out. That's cool. And then we have like. Like the festivals who used to be last year are now next year. Hmm. Okay. And like a, a huge uh, punk or independent festival in, in the Czech Republic called Mighty Sounds. Mm -hmm. they, they, they have like social distortion playing there. Oh, cool. Like good, good uh, mostly okay. punk bands, but good names. It's, it's a huge, nice festival. And it, yeah, it, it didn't happen last year, not this year. So maybe next year. Let's hope. All right. Fingers but, crossed. And also like like club shows, which were like planned for last uh, last year. Yeah, and they they are now maybe this winter or like we like we have shows coming up in in uh, September, but it's. It's kind of still hard to book shows right now because oh, I, I you have that. shows where are put back, but for new shows, it's kind of like mostly last minute. Like we were, we are uh, we've been approached by the Psychobilly Festival in Galeria. They plan to make the festival now in September instead of June. Okay. Is that a psychobilly meeting? Yeah. Okay. In Galea, Spain. Yeah. So it's in September, and if it's gonna happen, you know, it's the first weekend of September. Uh, well, we hope so. We hope that you know, yeah. it's gonna it's gonna start. So there aren't that many shows, like maybe ten shows till the end of the year, and and it, it just. Oh, I have one more question for you, actually, that I forgot to ask you. So if people want to reach out to you, reach out to the Peacocks and then see where you guys are playing. Are you guys on any social media? Do you have a website or your website uh, work, right? Actually, we have a website address, but the website stopped uh, some like last year. Okay. Because it was so old that the, the just stopped working you know because the <laughs> the programming is it's too old for all the uh, oh, wow okay it, it's just something i, I it, it's it's always like yes i know we have to make a new website um but yeah you have to make it you know yeah, like, yeah. yeah how about social media no social media either uh, we have a facebook ah okay but that's for some reason only Hasu has the the access. 
access. So it's, it's <laughs> I, I can't, uh, I'm thinking of maybe, I don't know if, if Twitter or, or all that stuff is that important or I don't know, or like Instagram or. <laughs> well, I would say that Instagram is pretty important for the band. Is but, it you know, I'm not that active, so you know, I you know, I, I would not be the right person to to ask. But I'm I sure mean, I remember when when there was like that MySpace. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And we were kind of like late for MySpace, and then then we decided, okay, well, let's join MySpace. It was was like half a year, and then it was already kind of like over. <laughs> and, oh, now we have to move to. It's just, yeah, I don't, I know. I, I like to make music and. Uh, I know. And I, the other thing is I, it, it, it takes time, you know, you have to. Absolutely. Unfortunately, you know, the, the whole social thing is, I mean, is, is and it's, part of it that we have to, um, that we have to have to do as musicians so and you know i have a wife i have a son and i don't want to do that when i'm at home because i'm now i'm i'm at home a bit more but usually when we we're touring quite a lot you know then uh -huh. if i'm home i want to be home and then i have side jobs to get a little income for Goodbye. to be safe you know sure. but there i can't i work in a bar or at the, the museum as a guard so i can't do it there as well you know uh, either so it's it's all that social media stuff i would have to do it at home but I, if i'm at home i want to be at home yeah you want to play with your kid yeah cool man um, is there anything else that you would like to add? I'm pretty sure we covered everything I wanted to cover, but if there's anything else that you wanted to add, we've been talking for two hours. And I was wondering, yeah, like, oh, that's quite a long, surprised. long yeah, time. Always surprised. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I think probably when 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 it's 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 done, then I'm like, ah, oh, then like, you got to figure out something. Yeah, right now. I'm, I like if it's just natural talking, you know. Absolutely. Uh, you, uh, let me read the, like, like, a couple more comments, and um, and then we can. All right. Uh, Asia yeah, yeah. Oh. Sark Brooklyn wrote greetings from Mirko from Sark Brooklyn mm -hmm. to the Peacocks and Georgia. You know him? I don't. It's a huge guy with glasses. Uh, Italian. He's probably originally from Italy, but he grew up in Cyber. Oh. I think he's that guy, yeah. Mirko, Mirko sounds pretty, you know, like from my neck of the Hi, Mirko. <laughs> he's a cool guy. Hi, <laughs> All right. He was from, from the early days. Yeah. And Carol, indeed, she wrote uh, something in German. So, okay. Thank you very much for, for parting, sharing. Yeah. Okay. All right. Truly appreciate this interview. Thank you, Carolyn. Thanks for always being thank here. Uh, thank you, Simon. And I hope to see you play live somewhere, uh, somewhere soon. I hope you guys are going to be, be be touring, and I can't wait to hear the new album. Yeah. yeah I hope too. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks so I much hope. for being a part of the slab stream. Thank, thank you very much, much for having thank me. Of course, and say hello to the bandmates, and I'm sure See our yeah. path is going to cross again sometime soon. I hope so. Yeah, I awesome. hope it's starting soon again. Yes, hope so. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Good luck with everything, and yeah. bye bye. Thank you. Bye. All right. Thanks for Simon. Thanks for all you slap streamers. Uh, I got like a few more comments. Um, come to the US with 
Killed in the Moon Explosion, I assume. Uh, Cloudberry joined late, but cheers. It's never too late, but don't be late next time. Um, and um, this episode is going to live on YouTube, you know, so you can always uh, check it out. The whole thing. And thanks to all of you that wrote all these great comments. And special thanks to Simon for playing for us and for being here um, in Slapsville. And such a special thanks to Christopher Henry for the super sticker. So you should uh, follow his example next time so you can uh, do more of these super stickers. And then so I'm going to be able to do this thing uh, more often and definitely longer. If you'd like to support uh, Slapstream live from Slapsville, make sure to check out. You can donate via Venmo and PayPal. Or you can subscribe to my Patreon and offer a bunch of cool perks over there. So check that out. Uh, thanks to all of you. Um, 54th episode is over. It's kind of amazing. If you haven't clicked the subscribe button, make sure to do that. Uh, give me a thumb up. If you want a, one of these t-shirts, go to artofslabbase.com. And don't forget, never fret. Slide it in smooth and keep it in a group. I'm Georgia, and I will see you next Saturday.